Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I stand to speak on this uh, urgent debate. Uh, there are many uh, pressing issues facing the country at the moment, um, and it's somewhat surprising to be standing speaking in this uh, debate on this issue, uh, but here we are. Mr Speaker, MMP uh, is a great system. It's a system which means that there is diversity in this parliament in a way that there would not otherwise be. Now, that means that there are people in parliament who one strongly disagrees with. It's fair to say that there are strong disagreements between the ACT Party and the Green Party. Uh, nonetheless, we are both here because of the MMP system, and while we have different views, it is part of the respect that we treat each other uh, that we listen to those views. I think it's important uh, that the smaller parties, uh, the MMP parties, are in this parliament and have a voice. It seems to me that the issue should be one of principle. It's not about Chris Carter or anyone else. It's about does the ACT Party have the right to change their leaders, and it seems to me that they do have that right, that that is the fundamental right of the ACT Party to choose who their leader and deputy leader are, and hence, as part of the agreement with National, determine who the two ACT ministers will be in the Cabinet. Now, well, ultimately, it's up to the Prime Minister to choose the ministers. As part of the agreement, there has to be the give and take that allows the smaller parties to choose who their ministers will be. Uh, so it seems to me that the ACT Party is entirely within its rights to choose who its leader is and to choose who its deputy leader is. Now, we can argue that uh, Mr Hyde should have told the country why it is that Heather Roy was sacked. Um, and clearly there is an argument about transparency and openness that the country would like to know why one of the ministers of the Crown has changed. And the country would like to know why the ACT Party went through that change. And I would strongly encourage uh, Mr Hyde and others within the ACT Party to be open with the country and tell people why they did choose uh, to make this change in leadership. Nonetheless, I stand by the principle that the ACT Party has the right to choose its own leaders in its own process. And I think that's a fundamental, fundamental principle. I think it's also important this is an opportunity, I guess, to talk about uh, the ACT Party and their role in government, as the, uh, as the Treasurer just did. Because it seems to me it may be, in fact, that through, these, uh, through the ruckus that ACT's just been through that they may weaken their hand in government. In fact, um, they may find that they have a weaker hand in government than they had previously. And from the Green Party's point of view, because we disagree with ACT on a large range of issues, that's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, on privatisation. The ACT Party is very pro-privatisation. Um, and in fact, what that means is that if we privatise some of our assets, that they will go into overseas ownership. Uh, ultimately, there's, it's hard to avoid. Um, that will increase the current account deficit and add to the economic problems that New Zealand already faces. So if the ACT Party is strengthened during this process, the problem will be that it adds to the privatisation agenda. Likewise, uh, as the uh, Treasurer just spoke of, uh, the ACT Party tends to be the party of the supporting inequality. Um, it wants a tax system which maximises inequality. Uh, that's one of its objectives and one of its fundamental principles. Now, the problem with um, a policy that supports inequality is that it's bad for everybody. Whether you're wealthy or poor, a society that's more unequal is a, is a worse society to live in. It also means that more and more of our resources are used in the prison system uh, because the more unequal a society is, the higher the prison population. This, of course, combines with another tenet of the ACT Party, which is the so-called tough-on-crime uh, policies, which basically means locking up more and more people in jail for fewer and fewer crimes. Um, what that means is that, is that, is that what is, that's quite right. The ACT Party is in favour of locking up more and more people uh, for, a, for a wider and wider a range of crimes. Quite right, Mr Garrett. Um, and what that means is that more and more of the tax take will be spent uh, on locking people up in jail. Because ACT wants to reduce the amount of tax that's actually taken, but they want to spend more and more money on prisons, it means there's less and less money for spending on everything else. So during this process, if it results in a, a weakening of the ACT Party agenda as a result of the particular ruckus around Heather Roy, um, then that's possibly a good thing for the country. It seems to me it would be a good thing for the country if we don't go down the ACT line of more privatisation, more inequality, more people in prisons. 
I think one of the other um, issues that uh, Mr English touched on that's worth addressing is the deregulation policy that ACT and, to some degree, National have been pushing. We know that the leaky houses, housing fiasco, uh, which is costing our country something like $20 billion, is a result of the deregulation that came with the Building Act in 1991. Had the Building Act 1991, with its deregulation um, ethos, not come in, a lot of people wouldn't have got leaky houses and we wouldn't have a $20 billion bill to repair those houses. So one of the fundamental tenets of ACT that they've brought to this parliament is this deregulation uh, methodology. It is, in fact, uh, one, of the, one of their strong, strong points. The problem is it's been very, very expensive for New Zealand as a result of the 1991 Building Act. I think the other part that's quite significant in this change is, of course, uh, John Buscowan becoming a minister. Um, now, John um, has many strong views, and, and they're honestly held views, um, but clearly John does not want to listen, Mr Buscowan does not want to listen to the science around climate change. Uh, he is a climate, climate change denier. Um, so he doesn't want to listen to the science around climate change, which means that it's uh, very dangerous for New Zealand if we have uh, the cabinet, or the, 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 rather the executive, is pushed in a direction in which the science around climate change is more and more marginalised. So one of the challenges will be, um, will the results of the, uh, the changes of, of, of Heather Roy being replaced by John Boscowan uh, mean that the climate change science deniers will have more influence in the executive? And I think that's one of the real challenges, because the government has weakened its emissions trading scheme, already. Um, it's not really uh, coping with the increase in extreme weather events that's happening globally and that we need to prepare for, and that will become even more dangerous if those who don't want to read science and don't listen to science have a bigger say in the executive. And that's one of the other dangers in this particular, in this particular change. Nonetheless, I accept, I accept that the ACT Party was voted by New Zealanders. It has a right to be in this parliament. It has a right to choose its own leaders. And while I may disagree with it on many issues and disagree with, the, the, with many of the policies of the ACT Party, I certainly respect their right to choose their leaders and as part of the agreement with National to choose which of the, ministers, uh, which of the members of the ACT Party will find themselves as ministers uh, in the executive. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Rodney Hyde.